So what is Starlark? Um, well, my Google search, my Google image search, um, I had to include this. The third image, Google image of Starlark, is this romance novel. So um, if you are really interested in a time travel romance novel, uh, feel free to read this Starlark book. This is a free ad, I guess. Um, but yeah, if you Google, Google image Starlark, this will come up. But uh, not what we're going to talk about today of this one of series books, but um, actual Starlark that we're talking about is, is a dialect of Python. Um, it's, it will be, for those who, who, who know Python, it will be familiar to you, but it's not, it's not kind of a direct copy and paste. You can't copy and paste your Python in, in, and assume to use it in, 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 in Star, with Starlark, but um, kind of there are similarities, similarities there. Um, I've, I've included, if you go into the stack link into the Starlark specification, the specs, the spec, the GitHub spec sheet. Um, here's a screenshot as well um, to read more about just kind of the syntax and how the available functions that are there, um, and kind of reemphasizing of how the, the simplicity of processors, the the Starlark execution cannot access file systems or network or system resources. Um, and, and we've used Starlark, um, kind of the team decided to go forth and, and use Starlark because of the popularity of, of Python, um, and with the limited number of external dependencies and, and kind of the good performance as well. And this, this kind of came up from a lot of, a lot of requests for math type processors. I think we have seen a good bulk of just requests on, 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 on math functions, I'll, I'll kind of do some of those today. Um, Logger operations, some string operations, I think that's when it's important to go into the, the spec sheet to understand kind of the capabilities of, of Starlark um, and, and kind of what you can fully do with it. Um, so next, this is what the Starlark plugin configuration will look like. Um, the, the, the kind of just general template of it. Um, the actual function itself will require um, an apply, we'll, we'll call an apply function, and you can return um, none or single metric or a list of metrics. And in your actual configuration, you'll either um, set your, your function directly in, 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 the, in the processor configuration, um, kind of how it's seen here, wrapping in the, in the source, or you can reference a, a kind of a, a, a longer or just a script in general, uh, or shorter script um, in your plugin as well. Um, only one, one, one source or script can be used per, per, per Star processor. So that's, that's pretty key. Here's in, uh, this was actually, this actually came up somewhat recently, just someone wanted to use, a community member wanted to use, um, wanted to calculate power um, from their Modbus plugin. So this is in that, it probably might be a common IoT example, want to calculate power from their voltage and current coming from their Modbus uh, data and kind of just was wondering, this was something, this was a request they wanted to do, how can I do that um, locally? And uh, this is something that, that Starlark would be able to do. So from your maybe physics 101 uh, classes, multiplying, we, 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 you would be able to take your current and voltage from your uh, Mod Plus plugin and, and multiply those together and, and, and stream in your power data too. Okay, I think that's it. It's, it's kind of the, I'll, I'll probably be going more math, going over some more of these similar math cases, uh, use cases in the step. All right, cool. Um, so because of the simplicity of it, it's not, um, I'll go through a handful. These are all kind of test, test use cases that are in, uh, that you can see in our GitHub repo under the, proce and the processors. Um, we're looking to add more. So if you have any kind of good general examples, feel free to, to send them in, but um, I'll kind of go through, through all of them just so you can get a good understanding. Um, so just taking this, we'll go through, I'm going to do maybe go from boring data to a little more fun data. Um, kind of just, this is your generic, um, I'm just taking the simple, uh, 
mem input plugin and looking at at the output so you can see that we have a good number of integers um, out there and um, in my output so so kind of your by bytes available used and so the example i'm going to use is kind of this scaling uh starlark function um so what i would do i would take kind of taking that sample config um include it the, the the processor um i'm going to just take this is directly written out exact exactly as example that we have in in our github and i'm going to change all of the integer um fields in 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 from from my input plugin and maybe change them from bytes to uh i think that's kilobytes someone maybe correct me <laughs> um, but so so simple just the type int um taking that and dividing it by all of those by a thousand. So saving that, I should be able to run this again. And I can see even just kind of my active went, was divided by a thousand. And you can see all, all of the integer functions were um, all just applied to scale, um, to scale down by a thousand. So you can always change this and kind of just reduce it even more. So just simple things like that is stuff you can do with Starlark. Um, I'll show another example, um, my favorite bike data. Um, so let's, or I'll just, we'll actually look in cloud two on what this looks like. Um, I'm outputting this data into my cloud two. Um, hopefully, let's see how many seconds this took. I changed it to 10 seconds. Here we go. So we can see that. So in this bike data, they they kind of just give me kind of the number of bikes available, docs available, but they don't give me that type of percentage that I maybe want to, to ingest into, into my InfluxDB. So once again here, I can use um, kind of show, showing us that, that typical max function. I'm going to actually kind of want to see what exactly these field names are. So let's change this to bikes. Um, I'm going to change this to number of bikes available. Um, docs. So these are the two fields that I'm going to take and do calculations on. And we'll call it um, let's to see what percentage of bikes are available. So percent bikes available. This is per station. So my station is my um, tag. So I'll do bikes divided by, um, there's no capacity on here. So I'll do bikes or total number of, of capacity of the station. So bikes plus stock should be able to give me that. So I'm taking both of those and, and, and getting a percentage of bikes available. So so Samantha, this creates a new field called percent bikes yeah. available. Yeah. Okay. So um, just take that. We'll be able to see it in a bit. Oh, not one. So yeah, this will create a new field um, called percentage of bikes available. We can run the test. And so you can see it, see right there, calculated 72%. Um, and let's see it. Oh, so actually, because some of them, the data might be the best, but um, kind of with this calculation, I think some of them might have zeros in them. And so zero divided by zero will give you that error. But um, on a good majority of these stations, you should be able to see, now we have this percentage of bikes available now in my influx DB. So um, this will probably be a common example that you'll use. And I'll lastly show, uh, um, just copy and pasting. This is my, this is not, once again, my, my one of my favorite examples, but not the best time series examples. Um, this is my Premier League data um, that's out there. 
Um, and I'll lastly use this renaming function. We actually even have a rename um, processor ready. So for a lot of people that will actually maybe just be simpler to use um, because it is kind of that normal just configuration. It's, it's a pretty like kind of the Toml that, that all of our plugins are like. It's, it's a little more simple, but um, you can have these, the, this renaming capability in Starlark as well. Um, so let's just see what, this data looks like um, without the processor. So let's take some of these, um, this data set is, is coming from America. And so let's change some of these terms to more British type terms. Um, so I'm going to change, what do they call? Uh, I'll change team ID to club ID um, and maybe games to matches. And because the example that we have is, is tags, but we're gonna be changing fields. So, oops. So let's replace all of our tags with fields. Okay. So the same thing I'm going to, let's take this. Oops. I think one of your tags didn't take the replace look like but oh okay i'll do that <laughs> oh thank you um yeah so we'll rename that into here so renaming my team id to club id games to matches um We'll throw that in here. And so you should be able to see, I'll put that into my cloud too. So you can see it in the, in the, in the UI as well. So we have matches here um, and uh, club ID somewhere. Oh, here it is. <laughs> um, but, and I can also, so here, so I mentioned before, you can only do one, one Starlark script per, per plugin. So if I want to say I wanted to add win percentage as well, this, this data doesn't calculate win percentage. I'll add that here and um, include both in my, in my, my new Premier League um, Telegraph configuration. And I should be able to see both um, the naming changes appear. So now I have club ID and matches here as well as this win percentage down here. So yeah, as Manny said, it will create a new field with your new calculation. So that's kind of the, the, the basis of it. These calculations have been, been, or these math functions have been a big request for a while, for a couple of years. And so I think hopefully a lot of people out there will be happy to, to see these there.